Tropical storm Aaron moving into a more favorable environment and strengthening is likely going to occur starting from this point. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you here to separate the trash from the truth when it comes to Aaron and the weather in general. If you're watching from the Northern Caribbean, the Eastern Carolinas, Bermuda, the Turks and Caicos, Bahamas, I want you to pay close attention to this. I'd also love to know your thoughts after the afternoon model runs. If you see them, post them in the comments and we'll get to it. So here is Aaron as of the five o'clock advisory. The satellite is current as of nine o'clock, 50 mile per hour storm, certainly looking a little more healthy tonight. This was to be expected. The environment from this point on gets a little better and then it gets pretty much pristine as it moves north of the Caribbean. That flare up of red that you see there, that's the taller thunderstorms, the more intense thunderstorms around its center. So again, this was to be expected. So far, everything playing out as expected with slow development and then eventually ramping things up gradually as it approaches the Northeast Caribbean. So here is the latest track from the National Hurricane Center. Again, we're going to get a new track at 11 o'clock Eastern, then a new one at 5 a.m. Those are the advisories that the Hurricane Center does. Again, expected by Friday to start approaching hurricane status, if not even becoming one, and then gradually strengthening to a Cat 2 and then a major hurricane Category 3 as we get into the back half of the weekend as it hopefully lifts north of the Caribbean. Getting a little close here for at least potential impacts from Puerto Rico to the Leeward Islands. Again, the center of the storm, that's what the cone projects. So the error in there. So the center can move anywhere from the left side of the cone to the middle of the cone to the right side of the cone. And the storm's obviously larger than that. So if it does move on the southern side of that, some kind of impact would likely be felt into the greater Antilles and into the Leeward Islands. So watching that closely. Same deal for us in the Turks and Caicos, potentially the Bahamas. But I'm optimistic that you see there and the official forecast to show that the bending of Aaron and likely going to work its way to the north. Now, where we really have to watch and what some of the trends this afternoon were uh, was to push this a little bit further to the west. We're going to break down if that's something that could happen. And then obviously Bermuda, as most of the action, most of the modeling has suggested that that's where we have to watch out the most of any kind of land. Here are the European ensembles. And this looks like a giant plate of spaghetti. I get it. To me, this is super helpful, though, and to anybody that tracks the models, this is what you still want to look at at this stage of the game. It's the ensembles because we just don't have a ton of data because right now Aaron is moving in the middle of the ocean, and the thing that is steering it, the Bermuda High, is also in the middle of the ocean, and we just don't have a lot of data in the middle of the ocean. So that's why ensembles are key because different initial conditions are put in so that we can say, okay, if the Bermuda High is a little bit stronger, maybe it takes this line. Or if it's a little bit weaker, maybe it goes this line. Is there If there's drier air here, maybe it doesn't develop until further down the line. So that answers a lot of the questions, and it gives us a better idea of maybe some of the outliers, the potential outlying impacts or the outlying model runs if shenanigans can happen. And what I mean by shenanigans is I'm looking at the state of Florida. Because there's been a lot of making that it's coming to Florida. Is this going to do the same thing as Irma and not turn? I want to show you, or I want to at least uh, talk about, back in 2017, this is a little tangent. Tangent number one. Because I've seen that on social media. Of people concerned that it's not going to turn in Florida. Back in 2017, I looked back at some of these ensembles, and there were about five members that came through here. Well, if you remember, Irma kind of skirted back, back down in this direction, hit Cuba, then went back up that way, and then up that like that. So early on in Irma's life, there was ensemble support that something like that could happen. It was a low probability at that point when Irma was back, back here, but it wasn't zero. There's nothing suggesting that Aaron is going to do that. Do that. There's no ensemble support for a Florida landfall, and I'm going to show you some more models in just one second. Hopefully, it has a nice, big, wide goalpost in between Bermuda and the eastern seaboard of the United States, and it just takes that up and out. That's still the most likely scenario as of August 13th at about 9 o'clock Eastern time. There have been some uh, concerning bumps here, and we're going to look at the upper levels of the atmosphere to show you why that happened. First, though, I want to show you some of the modeling. These are the traditional spaghetti models here. And you see going out to Saturday, there it goes. The white line is the official forecast. 
and those guys continue to lift to the north uh, over the next couple of days. I'll replay that again because I advanced it a little too quickly. But you see that curve, again, away from Florida, and then these guys try to go up in between Bermuda and the Carolina coastline. Now, the 12Z run, if you've been on social media, the 12Z run of the Euro, and I'm showing you this right now with the steering current, this is what's going to get blasted around because it did show something concerning, and we're going to talk about it. So there's the developing storm as of Sunday, this little bowling ball thing here, the green and blue. This, by the way, these dips in the jet stream out here, you see that little dip off of New York uh, in between the black lines dip a little bit from New York to Bermuda. That is the trough that is going to help to weaken the Bermuda high to allow it to start lifting north. So it's going to feel that weakness. You see the orange go away a little bit, but then it comes back. So this is where I always say, and this is why you can't put stock in a 300-hour model run like the a lot of people were sharing earlier in the week when the Euro AI and the GFS were showing this into the golf. Okay. That's why I said don't look at those because um, they're trash at that point. But these are the nuances that we still don't know because we don't have the upper trough that's going to be potentially having its hand in the steering later on. That's over Canada. So it's not in the United States upper air network just yet. But there is the strengthening hurricane right there. And we don't like the fact that we have the high pressure cells trying to touch each other and act as a, a blocking. And that does help to nudge it, Aaron, a little bit further to the west, uh, closer to North Carolina. Still, though, it looks like it's it's going to be able to make its way out. But if we do lose some of that, that could become problematic, some of that weakness. So I want to show you again, this is the European, the two runs, the difference from the 12Z run of today and the 0Z run from early this morning. So this is 12Z now, and this is the storm kind of off the, Cal uh, the Carolina coastline, okay? I'm going to bring up my telestrator, and we're going to do some, do some uh, high-level telestrating up in this piece, okay? Here's the deal. There's the storm, there's the high pressure, there's the appendage trying to touch that high pressure over uh, parts of the lower 48. Here's what happened. Note, see the difference? That's 12Z, that's 0Z. 12Z, 0Z. This morning, last night. This is the key. It's this piece right up in here, that little blue dip where my telestrator is going nuts. That is now showing it much faster and not as sharp, that trough. So it's allowing this ridge to build back faster after being weakened by that trough that's now moved out there, okay? Last night, it was faster and sharper, and it grabbed it it kept the escape lane wide open. So now, okay, we don't freak out over these, okay? This is one model run of one model. It's ensemble, and 18Z started to come back to the east a little bit, so I want to be clear about that. I want to show you why the model did that rather than just go post like, oh my gosh, Carolina on alert. Certainly we need to be watching. If there is going to be any direct impact to the United States from Aaron, it would be closer to the mid-Atlantic, okay? However, that's still on the lower end of the possibilities at this time. While I have this up, I want to show you uh, the Google DeepMind models, uh, ensembles, the 50 members. All 50 members keep them away from the United States. It gets close to the Turks and Caicos. All of them go right down the middle. Field goal is good. Just one around Bermuda. I would love this. This is the best case scenario. We'd have to watch for the Northeast Caribbean. Still some impacts here, even if it went right down the center because it'd be a bigger storm. So we'd be watching that. I would love that. This is this would be awesome. And again, that's what those other channels aren't aren't telling you. Okay, like that's still, even though we got one rowdy run of the Euro this afternoon, um, they're not showing you this. And they're not showing you that the highest probability is still to safely go through the goalposts as I like to call it, Bermuda and the Eastern Seaboard. Again, nothing is set in stone, and what will help us out immensely is this. 
The men and women are getting up into these things starting tomorrow. It's now close enough to land. They're flying out to the Caribbean as we speak. And on Friday afternoon, 4 o'clock, the first flight is going to take off. It's going to be a NOAA P-3. We have uh, the tail Doppler radar on that thing. We have all the bells and whistles to get a nice view of the structure here. So we're going to know a lot more about what Aaron is doing and some of the environment directly involved with it. Then we have the Air Force recon going up at Friday at 2 o'clock in the morning. And then another NOAA P-3 getting up in there at 8 o'clock in the morning. And this is just the start. There are three other additional missions um, already scheduled for Aaron. And we're going to know a whole heck of a lot more. So there's no reason to panic over any of these model runs that are out there. Just because, one, and I know it's the Euro, and the Euro nail standy. We've been hearing that since 2012. um, But it has its issues, Okay. We just need to watch, and this is our homework assignment over the next couple of days as a team, we're going to watch how that upper trough comes out of Canada. If it is uh, sharp and fast, we have a really good shot of this being the perfect scenario and going right in between Bermuda and the United States. If it's slow and not as sharp, Then we have an opportunity for that Bermuda high to kind of kick it back, build back west, slow uh, Aaron down a little bit, and then guide it to the west a little bit more. Still doesn't mean it's going to make a direct landfall, but we just don't want to see that trend. We don't want this to be a trend. I'll leave it with this. This is going to be kind of the reason why we haven't seen Aaron intensify a lot because the storm was relatively weak. Let me go back and add some pause points so it just doesn't fly away here. But the yellow, I love this map, and I like showing this to you when we have an active storm because um, it puts all the ingredients together. So this is the cake pan, if you will. It's got all the ingredients in it, the wind shear, the moisture in the atmosphere, um, the temperature of the water, all the stability of the app. It has all of this. It puts it all into one where you see the yellow and green, it's unfavorable. And where you see the peach and red, it's more favorable. So I started this off with the bubbling of Aaron, showing you that we had more thunderstorm activity, the convection. Look where it's at. It's getting out of the yellow and going into the peach. So that's exactly what we would expect to happen. And if you saw the videos last week, We talked about this, that the main development region is terrible for storms right now. Aaron has struggled. But once it gets into the extreme southwest Atlantic, look at the red. So we would expect some strengthening as we get into Friday, Saturday. That green, that bubble of green, by the way, it's the model um, showing that that's the most likely location where Aaron's going to be, and it's churning up some of the cooler water there. So that's why there's that bubble of green in the middle, but I have the computer models overlaid too to kind of show. And there we have that and the kind of turning of that into the red. So once it gets tomorrow into Friday out here, that's whenever it's going to have the chance to really grow up a little bit and become that major hurricane that the hurricane center is actually forecasting. Alrighty guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you are having a great evening again. Don't fall for the hype. I saw some big time articles from even news outlets today. that said breaking. The shift is happening with Aaron. It's shifting further West. It didn't. I know the Euro came in, but they were, that was the, they were talking about the 11 o'clock advisory cone. Just be careful out there. There's a lot of clickbait. You're never going to get that from me. You're going to get sound science. You're going to get sound meteorology. And we're going to have that weather conversation as we do every night that we are hanging out together. Thank you guys a ton for tuning in and watching this video. If you have any questions, feel free to post in the comments. I will do my best to get to everybody as always. Thank you so much for being here. We'll catch you next time.